thank you very much for welcoming me. I know it's been a long day. I know also that you have been talking, discussing a lot about changes, transformation in your industry. And I would like to discuss with you now changes and transformation in your personal life, in our industries in general, in our communities and in the world. First, I would like to ask you a question. With all these changes, transformation in the world, do you think our kids, our children, are going to live in a better world compared to our world or to a worse world? So if you think that our kids are going to live in a better world according to your own criteria, please raise your hand for a better world. If you think they are going to live in a better world, Okay, I think it's about half of the people, maybe less. So now, please raise your hand if you think our kids are going to live in a worse or not as good world. Hmm, I think it's about... P please keep your, keep your hand raised for one second and, and look around you. Because this is really amazing. I think in the past, I would say, 60, 70 years, this is the first time that approximately the same amount of people believe that their kids are going to live in a world that may be not as good as us. I believe most, most of our parents, grandparents, believed in progress. They believe that we would live in a better world. Did anybody, I didn't see very well with the light, did anybody raise his or her hands twice or both hands? Nobody? <laughs> Because, oh, I can see somebody over there. Because I raised my hands twice or both at the same time. Because I believe our kids, actually ourselves, we are going to live in a world that is getting better and better, worst and worst, all this at the same time, and even faster and faster. Because I believe that we are living in a world that has become more uncertain because it has become more chaotic. More chaotic in a scientific sense. And what I would like to share with you this evening, this afternoon, three things. Why and how our world has become more chaotic? Because we could challenge that. We could say that maybe our world has always been chaotic. I would like to show you how and why it has become more more chaotic. Second, what does it mean? What does it mean for us in our personal life, in our communities, in our companies, in our organizations? What does it mean, a chaos, in a way that we can use it? And the third part, which is the most important for me, is what do we do? What can we do to thrive in this more uncertain and chaotic world? What can we do to be more resilient? And what can we do even to benefit from crisis? First, why and how our world has become more chaotic? First, our, I could say our world has become more chaotic mostly, not only. Mostly for three reasons. Numbers, connections, and speed. First, number. How many people were living on this planet approximately 150 years ago? Do you know? Approximately one billion people were living on this planet. Our parents, our grandparents, were living in a quite empty world. Although I believe India has never been really empty. Huh? But, but the rest of the world, But the rest of the world was kind of empty. By the way, I'm showing you this picture because the little white dot in the middle, it's my house. <laughs> this is my house. This is in, in the south of France. And hopefully, I will be there Friday evening. <laughs> We were living, our parents were living in a quite empty world. How many people are living on this planet today? Approximately 7 billion, maybe 8 billion. And by the way, that's not Bangalore, huh? that's Mexico City, that's Mexico City. First, numbers. 
If you look at the evolution of the world population in the past, let's say, 200, 300 years, it's, it's like an explosion. If I, if I wanted to make a very, very, very bad joke, I could say that human beings are like a very, very successful virus. We were very, very successful to spread all over the planet. First, number. Second, connection. We have never been so connected. Since 2014, there are mobile phones on this planet than human beings. I believe most of them, they are in India, most from what I can see. More than half of the world population is connected to Internet. Explosion of the number of people. I imagine for one second, I don't know, we are about like 200 people, maybe a little more in this room. Imagine that there are seven times more people in this room. I'm not saying this is going to be better or worse. I'm saying this is going to be different. And not only there would be seven times more people in this room, but they will all be talking or tweeting or TikToking or Instagramming or whatever together at the same time. This already could create what I'm going to call chaos or a chaotic state. When I tell this to my, to my friend, most of the time they tell me, Bruno, you think you are, we are living in an amazing transition, in an amazing time in human history, because this is your time. But most probably, 1,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, people were also feeling they were going through an amazing time. If somebody tells you that, please say yes. Obviously, your parents, grandparents, or ancestors went through amazing times, amazing uh, battles with the gods, amazing uh, crises, amazing uh, migration. If somebody tells you that our ancestors always went through amazing times, please tell them that they are right. But the big difference with our time, with our transition, is two words, speed and scale. No transition has impacted so many people in such a little time. Think about when we moved as human beings from the gather, gathering, hunting stage to the agricultural stage. It took thousands of years. And it didn't impact all the people at the same time. When we changed from the agricultural era stage to the industrial, commercial, era, it took hundreds of years. And again, it didn't impact everybody at the same time. This transition to the, I'm not sure how to call it, the knowledge uh, era, the information era, the communication uh, era, the wisdom era, not yet huh, for the wisdom, is happening in what? 30 years? 40 years? Maybe less. Which is less than the lifetime. We don't have time to adapt. Time and speed. Whenever you think that, ah, oh, it's it already happened before, check the time and the speed. No transition has impacted so many people in such a little time. Numbers. There have never been so many people on this planet. Connection. We have never been so connected. And for a certain number of things, there is an amazing increase in speed and scale. This is what creates that what we can call a chaotic stage. Second part. What is chaos? Chaos, for science, is not good or bad. Chaos is just a stage. It's like water. Water can be solid, Water can be liquid or water can be a gas, like vapor. We don't think about it because for us it's quite automatic. We know how to handle water depending on its stage. Solid, it's more the ice cube for cocktail times. We don't have to think about it. It's very important to understand in what stage is what I will call a system. What is a system? My body is a system. Your body is a system. Your company is a system, India is a system, the world is a system. I could say a system, it's things interacting with 
other things. Like water, a system can have three different stages. And I would like to show them to you so you can recognize them. And like with water, you can properly interact with the system efficiently depending on this stage. First stage that is possible, it's equilibrium. From here, as far as I can see, you look quite balanced on your chair. I don't know what's going in there, huh? uh, but from here, you look quite at equilibrium and very balanced people. If I would come, I won't do it, huh? but if I would come and push one of you on your chair, you would start to oscillate. Maybe not as uh, orderly uh, as that, but you will try to, like a, like a swing. You will resist, and then I will push, like a thermostat. I believe somewhere in this room there must be a thermostat. If the temperature is too hot, AC will be put on, temperature will decrease. When it's too cold, the thermostat will stop AC, temperature will go up. Everything is under control. This is what we call, don't remember that, this is what we call a linear system. But please remember that when we are at the equilibrium or close to equilibrium, when things are oscillating not too far from equilibrium, once we have understood, we can predict and control. And most of what we have learned, especially uh, managing companies, managing teams, we have learned to understand, predict, and control. And don't forget that, huh, because it's working very well whenever the system can be predicted, understood, and controlled. But what we learn from chaos theories is that at a certain stage, call the tipping point, the system can go out of control. The, the, it's like a crazy thermostat. The thermostat is broken. If it's too hot, AC on, it's getting colder and colder. And when it's too cold, the thermostat put more and more AC. The colder it is, the colder it gets. Because we have never been so connected, because some things are going faster and faster, we can see many, many examples of this self-amplification, which is also known as the butterfly effect. A small thing gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Self-amplification. To make things easy, in your daily life or in your business life, if you have a problem and you try to fix it with the processes that you have planned to use, if things, if things goes back to normal, please don't look for chaos theories. You don't need that. Keep using your existing processes. But if you realize that whatever you do, things are getting worse, then, and you see, it not, or not only are getting worse, but they're getting, getting worse and worse and worse each time you try a new thing. Then, don't try to control. This is what we will see in the third part in two or three minutes. We will have to use new tools. Every time you see things self-amplifying, you know you are in a chaotic stage. Normally, at that point of my talk, you should be wondering, what's next? What will happen once we have passed the tipping point and we start to see this self-amplification? People, the richer people they are, the richer they get, the poorer they are, the poorer they get. Each time you see self-amplification, you know that according to the chaos theories, two things can happen. There are some good news, and there are some bad news. So I will share with you first the bad news so we can end and work together on the good news. First, the bad news, the system can collapse. This is the second principle of thermodynamic, also known as entropy. If you don't take care of this beautiful uh, Lila Palace Hotel, if you come back in 20 years, maybe it won't be totally collapsed, but for sure it won't look good. If you own a house, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. But not only buildings or houses are collapsing. Kingdom, 
empires, civilizations are collapsing. I came for the first time in Bangalore 30 years ago. And for many, many, many years, I had a dream. I wanted to visit Hong Kong. So this time, I decided, this is enough. I'm getting too old. So I came three days in advance before this talk uh, with you. And I spent my weekend in Hampi. So I don't know if I should trust my guide, but I was very impressed when he told me that Hampi, the kingdom that last 230 years, if I remember very well, when it collapsed, it took six months for the population in Hampi to go from half a million people to almost zero. Six months. Half a million people, zero. There are many other examples. Rome, one million people, it took longer. 30 years, 30,000 people. When things collapse, they do collapse. And by the way, very important, the kingdom in Hampi was a huge thing, I understand, from all southern India. And at the same time, I believe when it did collapse, it didn't affect that much Europe, the Chinese, or the Japanese. It was kind of local. I believe today, if we had the same kind of collapse in India or any other way, any other places in the world, that would impact everywhere in the world. Think about COVID. Think about the war now in Europe, how it can impact our businesses on the other side of the planet. That was the bad news. Now, good news. There is another part of the story. According to chaos theories, a new equilibrium, a new system, basically, can emerge. We talk about an emergence or a breakthrough. So not only everything we know, not only our civilization could collapse, according to chaos theories, but a new civilization, which is basically a new way of living together, could emerge. I will come back in my conclusion on that, because I think this is one of my most important messages. I think we are here in some aspect and again, from what I have heard in your discussion today and when I prepared uh, this talk, I can see a lot of changes in your industry. And I think this is an amazing opportunity for incredible breakthrough. I'll come back on that. Again, when I tell that to my friends, they tell me, Bruno, you are a dreamer. Uh, you think that things can go better, you are helpless optimist. And I always answer that we are the result of this breakthrough, of this emergence from the atom to the molecules to the living cell to the organism to all of us who are maybe the state of the art of complexity. I'm not sure. Huh? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Uh, maybe some of you, but I'm not sure for, for all of us. First thing I would like to, you to remember, it's self-amplification butterfly effect. If you see things getting worse and worse, whatever you do, don't try to control. Don't try to control. The second thing is there is another gift from what I call the gift from chaos. The first one is the self-amplification that we are going to use. And the other one is chaos doesn't mean disorder. Chaos doesn't mean mess. In chaos, there is a certain kind of order. In nature, in life, you can have disorder. In disorder, in randomness, you cannot predict precisely anything. There may be some kind of statistics that you could use and apply, but you cannot predict precisely. And then, we have seen, I call that linear system, you could call that order, order. Once you have understood, you can predict and control. Disorder, randomness, you cannot predict. Order, you can, once you understood, you can predict. Chaos is a third state. That's how Ilya Prigogine got a Nobel Prize, when he could describe that. Chaos is neither disorder, neither order. In chaos, listen carefully. You cannot predict precisely. And at the same time, not anything can happen. There is some kind of hidden order. This is called 
a strange attractor. What I'm showing you here, this is the Lorentz strange attractor. What I wanted to see, the little dot that you can see moving is a description of the system. If you look carefully, the little dot is never going to be at the same place next round, next what we call iteration. And at the same time, the little dot is not doing a random thing. I'm sure you could identify, you could see that there is a pattern. Remember that chaos is not mess. We are going to use, think of that. What if I could give you a tool that even in this unpredictable time, uncertain time, chaotic time, you can find a way that not anything can happen. You can keep, I don't want to call it control, but you could make sure or almost sure that things can happen. Remember that. I think we are at this stage. I think in many aspects on our, in our personal lives, in our industries, in the world, we have passed the tipping point. And there are two possibilities. Breakthrough, good news. Collapse, bad news. So now, what to do? What to do to be more on the good side? We are going basically to use these two gifts of chaos. Strange attractor and butterfly effect. But first, one thing is important. What we have learned before, especially, I'm sure there must be, like me, many engineers or technical people in the room. And what we have learned is when, the thing, when things get more complicated, we have learned to do more complicated things, to fix it. And, and by the way, it works. It works on a linear system, but it doesn't work when it's a chaotic phase, when it's a chaotic stage. So please don't do that. If you realize that we are, you are in a chaotic stage, don't do more chaotic things. Just, it's been said before, I've been talking to so many people in my life, and I've been talking a lot with people exposed to uncertainty like uh, uh, special forces people, war journalists, and I always ask them the, sa the same question, and complexity theorists as well. They always answer, Bruno, when it gets more complex, keep simple. Keep simple. All the tools I'm going to share with you, two words, strange attractor, I'm going to use another word eh, from now. And the second thing is small changes, big result, butterfly effect, which I'm going to translate in create your own strange attractor, what I will now call your dream, your vision, and then after we will see the small things that you would call processes, but sometimes I would call rituals, routines, and most probably I will call at the end just repetition. First, how can you create your strange attractor? Maybe some of you, you've already uh, ride a, a bicycle in mud or in the sand. I don't know if you realize what happened. I remember when it happened. I was riding a, a, a small uh, motorbike. And when I arrived in the sand, the, the, the handle starts to oscillate. And what did I do? The wrong thing. I start to try to control the handle. And then self-amplification, and then collapse. I'm sure if you have done it, you may, some of you, know the secret. If you don't want to fall, you have to look at a straight point somewhere. And this, almost by miracle, will help you to smoothly ride the difficult time. When everything is linear, when everything is kind of balanced, ah, you can ride the bicycle and raise your hand, be on your mobile phone uh, at the same time, but when it gets muddy, or sandy, when it gets uncertain and chaotic, you cannot do that. You have to keep your, handle, your, your hand on the handles and have a, a point to keep your focus. This is the time to be very clear about your dream, about your vision. As a manager, I should say as a leader, be clear about what do you want from your team, what do, be an ambassador for the vision of your company. And I will tell you just after that, repeat this vision with your team. Make sure when you get in the sand, in the mud, you are very clear about where you want to go. 
My second tool is how to use the butterfly effect. Small routines, small repetitions. Yeah, by the way, when you ride the bicycle or the motorbike, let's say the bicycle, not only you need a focus point, but you need to pedal. You need a certain speed. This is how emergence, breakthrough, you know, it's still a very uh, unknown even to the best scientists in the world. How one cell provides two cells, four cells, eight cells to create humans. How the only, only real, clear, definite answer we know is repetition. This is the time of repetition. Be very clear where you want to go and share it. Share it with your team. If you're not the boss, go to the boss and clarify what is his vision, what is his dream, so you can be an ambassador and repeat it. And I would even advise you as leaders and as human beings to have your own routines. Five, I always say five minutes a day can change your life. And don't believe me. Try it. Don't believe me. Try it. As a conclusion, I really think we are here. I really think we have this amazing opportunity. And, and even I would like to push you a little more. I believe that these years, as managers, as leaders, as parents, as citizens, because the world has become chaotic, I believe that all decisions in the coming month, in the coming years, I believe if we just talk about your industry, with all these changes, I believe that the decisions that you are going to make in the coming weeks, in the coming months, they would have a tremendous effect because of the butterfly effect. You know, sometimes I discuss with people in very small companies. And most of the time, they tell me, ah, oh, Bruno, we understand your point. But you know, I'm working in such a small company that I cannot change anything. I cannot change the world. And sometimes, I work in very big companies, like some of you I know uh, in, this, in this room. And the big companies people, they tell me, oh, Bruno, I know, I know, but we cannot change anything. They always tell me about the big ship, how difficult it is to move the direction. So small companies, big companies, nobody can do anything. I hope. I proved you that thanks to the butterfly effect, you never had so much power. In the linear world, in the previous world, to change things, you have to be the prime minister, the CEO, the richest man on, on the planet. By the way, it still helps a lot. But what I'm, I hope you got from my talk is, as an individual, as a leader, you never had so much power. Be clear with your vision and share it, and share it again. You know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you could tell your, the, the, your kids or the people in your team, you could tell it once or once a year, they will remember. Now uh, you are in competition with Instagram, with WhatsApp, they forget. Repeat. And I would suggest that you have your own routine. I hope now that when you will hear chaos, uncertainty, you will think, ah, that may be good news. That may mean opportunity. And I hope, like, like me now, when you hear the word chaos, you will be able to say, chaos is my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.